Achatina Achatina. It lays between 187 to 500. If one snail can lay averagely 200x and hatch averagely 100x, do that calculation. Let me give you these statistics. And everyone can Google it. Ghana consumes 15,000 tons of snow every year. But do you know the sad news? The sad news is that only 2,000 tons are produced locally. The remaining 13,000 tons are exported. The power of every investment lies on the power of money. But one thing that EFCCSD we cherish so much is that we look at the clients, how the economy is, so our charges are affordable so that they can also be able to bring out their dreams. So this structure of uh, 9 by 50 meters, it goes in... I'm sure you are wondering where I am now. I'm not in a residential area. I'm not in some uh, garden. I'm in a snow farm. Just imagine how clean and uh, organized this looks. Yes, a snow farm. If you are new on this channel, I'm sure you don't know who's, who Mr. Francis Afove is. But if you are a subscriber to this channel, you should know Mr. Francis Afove. He's a snow uh, expert and greenhouse expert. I wouldn't want to talk much. Let him come and then do the introduction himself. Thank you for having me on your farm. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, uh, we've had about two interviews, yes. but I still want you to introduce yourself to maybe the new person coming to watch the video. All right. Thank you very much. And it's nice having you. you I'd like to take the opportunity to once again say hi to all your cherished uh, followers. As you earlier on mentioned, uh, my name is Francis Afobe. I'm an environmental scientist by profession. But looking at how the trend of things are going now in terms of the climate, I see it to be very important for me to upgrade. So currently, I'm doing my master's in climate change and sustainable development so that I can implement most of the changes you know, in the various sectors and then meet to meet the demands of what the people want in terms of sustainability. Okay. Yes. Wow. This looks beautiful. Um, is this related to the climate change you are talking about? Some of these things that I, I'm seeing. I, are they because of the climate change that you are learning about? Because I see very different things going on here, things that I've not seen on uh, many snow farms. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. As we speak now, we are an era called Anthropocene era. Wow. And most of the scientists can bear with me. It's a geological approach, an era in which the human activities, the way of life we live, our consumption patterns, you know, is causing tremendous harm to the earth okay. and that of the you know, climate system. Mm. And because of that, it is triggering what is called climate change. So the climate change, you know, is already occurred. And so therefore, what are we doing, you know, to be sustainable in whatever we are doing? Because the climate change is affecting all the sectors of the economy. And in terms of the sustainable development, the area of the uh, economy, the, the environment, and then the social aspect, you call it the three pillars of sustainable development, okay. all are affected. Mm. So in EFCCSD, what gives us the competitive edge is that how do we position ourselves in our activities so that the clients who invest large amounts of or huge amounts of money in their businesses mm can, you know, get the expected or maximum yield. Okay. So that is why we are doing all this. Mm -hmm. And in the next few minutes, I'm going to walk you through the various innovations that we brought mm -hmm. in here. And we are implementing it in all other, you know, uh, projects. Okay. So this one is the first, you know, mm -hmm. uh, innovations in terms of uh, this thing that you are seeing in here. Wow, we would love to see that. Starting from here, we would want to know why You've planted, um, what, what, first of all, just tell us what okay. you planted here. Yeah. So, uh, this is Boko Boko, okay. and you could see that the soil is very rich. Mm -hmm. This is uh, poultry droppings and that of goats mixed with sawdust mm -hmm. and other materials, which I may not say it. No, that is my trade secret. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the Boko Boko is very, you know, nutritious for the snails, and it plays a major role for the growth, the productivity and all the health aspect of the snails. 
so the reason why we don't plant it in here is because we want this one to be a supplement okay so when it's bigger we just pluck it and send it inside for them to you know consume okay so yes. apart from the boko boko have you planted any other uh, different plants yes so let's let's pass here you can see that this is a uh, this is plantain mm -hmm. and that of uh, sweet potato. Okay. So the same approach. We are going to harvest it and then put it inside for the snails to consume. Okay. Although we've planted all this inside, but with time you see that the snails will continue to feed on the one inside. And then the carrying capacity of the one inside will reduce. Okay. So therefore, this one will just augment the one that is inside. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So all here the same thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, the the lineup and then the arrangements here is it intentional? Does it bring any benefit or is just you are just being organized? Yes, it's intentional. Okay. It's intentional because you look at the wind direction. Mm -hmm. All these have an impact. Okay. You know, on the on the snow because you know snails don't like a excessive wind. Okay, so if we are lining so that it will serve as a shade. Okay, okay. Okay, while serving as a shade, it will also serving as a, a windbreak. And these are some of the minor, minor things that I've been talking about the climate change, which, of course, other farmers or con uh, contractors are not implementing. And so, therefore, there's a huge mortality. Sometimes I get a consultancy service for people that they've constructed a greenhouse for their clients and they are reporting of high rate of mortality and i have to go and then see it chat them you know and implement certain things for uh, the mortality to stop okay, okay yes and then these roofs we have here this uh i okay. remember in la the last video you talked about yes how to anchor anchor yes. okay yes so we call this one anchor mm. you know there was a song, uh, if I could remember, oh, with the anchor hood in, in the stones. I, I can <laughs> see all the words, yeah. but yeah. what it does is that it will hold this one firm, yeah, okay. two of them. Mm. So in case of, you know, the wind, mm. you know, because of the climate change, as I say, hey, we are on, mm. our rainfall pattern has changed, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. the weather pattern in general has changed. Sometimes the time we expect rain, it doesn't rain. Mm. And even if it wants to rain, it comes with so much storm. Yeah. So this one serves as an anchor to hold it very, very firm. Mm. So that is the main purpose of this. Okay. Yes. okay. Now I think we can go inside and then talk about uh, some of the uh, innovations that you've okay. implemented. Yes. Yeah. So this thing you see here, mm. we call it the diesel method. The diesel method. Okay. Yes. The diesel method because... When we constructed the first one, mm. ants and other insects were trooping in. Okay. So we brought this with the purpose of filling in with diesel. Okay. 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 Mm. So that it will serve as a barrier mm. and no insect can pass. Mm. Huh. Okay, so but now we've been able to prevent that. So mm. it's useless and therefore we are not you know, no yeah, using okay. it for anything. So it goes round the... Yes, the, the entire perimeter. The entire perimeter. Yes. Mm -hmm. I see there are two uh, snow houses on the same uh, plot. Yes. Yes. Tell us, because I see that this one is already established. Okay. So our client is in the UK. Okay. You know, he contacted us for the first time without knowing us. Okay. And we delivered work for her. So based on the kind of work we did, and the yield she's getting, she's so happy. This one is just six months, mm -hmm. and very soon we are going in there, you see the snails. Oh, okay. So she said, wow, I never thought the snail business is so lucrative. Mm -hmm. So if that is the case, I want extra one. So we just finished this one yesterday. So uh, we have two snail houses here. Yes. But we are going to have you take us to the first one that you constructed for your clients. And then tell us a little about um, how you went about it. Because I know that 
um, people have different ways of doing their things. Of course. And you have your own way of doing uh, your farming. So yeah. just take us through how you did it for your client to be so satisfied to um, recom uh, ask for another, request for another snail house. Okay, mm -hmm. that's cool. Okay, so welcome to the old greenhouse. So you could see that we've planted in uh, sweet potato. This is a cover crop where they can feel comfortable and then also they feed on it. It's one of their delicacy. And this is also a cocoa yam. They also like their leaves. And this is also plantain. The main idea behind all this is that we are creating an ecosystem. When I say ecosystem, I'm talking about an environment where the snails will find it difficult to differentiate between the normal environment or natural environment and that of artificial environment. Oh, okay. So when they come in here, they still feel at home. They know that they are in the wild. Yeah. And so therefore, they can produce more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this is a walkway. Mm -hmm. And as we can see, the walkway is being covered or wrapped with uh, rubber. Yes. Okay. So that it can be more sustainable because it's a wood mm -hmm. else it will rot. Okay. So, um, you can also see this to be a hideout. Mm. So, it's more like a house within a house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you can see there. how, you know, the quantity of them in here. Yeah. Good. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. And this um, innovation yes. or this uh, hideout, yes. where did you get the idea? Good. So, as I said earlier on, mm -hmm. the collective you know application of the environmental knowledge the climate change knowledge mm. and our great aspects make it as a whole and this is one of our competitive advantage and this is why we are at the top in terms of you know uh, snow you know management and construction and that is the reason why we get contracts in terms of consultancy service mm. from other you know contractors because mm. Some of these things they don't know. And even if they want to implement, they don't implement it well. Mm. And one thing I like about this client is that she's very also innovative and collaborative. Okay. She do sometimes bring her idea, mm. then I also bring mine, then we polish it together. Okay. Yes. Okay. So this is solely an idea from your company, right? Of All course. Yeah. Okay. Of course. Okay. Okay. Of okay. course. That is, that is beautiful. And it only means that uh, we are being innovative yes. and then there's passion for what we are doing. Yes. yes. So you can see that they are happy and they are moving in. Mm. Let me leave only this. Mm -hmm. The reason why we put in this thing here mm. is because snails are saprophytic. Well, when I say snails are saprophytic, it mm. means they like things that are rotten. Okay. So let me lift it and you'll be amazed the quantities of snows in. Mm. Let's see. see. Hey. <laughs> They're all hiding. They're all hiding. Mm. So this is what we call point of lay. Okay. And significant number of them have started uh, laying eggs. Okay. And they are just six months old. No, they are not six they months not old. Six months old. Oh. They are not six months old. Mm. But you've had this place for six months. We constructed this place for six months. Six months okay. Then three months time, we brought them. Okay, okay, okay. And this one, they are from the wild. From the wild, okay. The reason why they are from the wild is because um, they are animal that we take from the wild and we are now breeding them in-house. Mm. Okay. So, therefore, if you want to start, we call it the foundational snail. Okay. You need to start with the snail that are from the wild. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, they can be able to thrive or do well. Okay. Okay. That is the main idea behind it. Mm -hmm. But, however, you can also go and buy some from people who are already rearing it. Okay. But okay. there may be differences. Mm -hmm. Yes. And how do you get them from the wild? Do you go yourself to... We have to pay some people, people to go and hunt for it. Oh, okay. There are areas in Ghana here where the 
you know significant quantities mm. even if you have one twenty thousand you can get it oh, okay yes so you can see they are just moving mm. because the environment is very conducive for them yes, yes. let me open here mm. and you just see mm. you see how they've consumed yeah the leaves yes and apart from this you feed them with your um, supplements supplements yes yeah, the last time we spoke about it this place looks very organized uh yes. did the person demand ask for something like this or are you doing it uh, just as a, a, a company that's how you work okay mm. so that is how we work okay mm. but you will see that you brought in certain innovations okay the reason is that as i said earlier on Climate change is affecting all the sectors of our economy mm -hmm. and especially the agriculture sector. Mm -hmm. You can experience the heat waves that we are in now. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, even most of the snail farmers, they are complaining about mortality. Yeah. The reason being that those who constructed it, they didn't bring in certain innovations mm -hmm. to make the, the, the project more sustainable. Okay. When I say sustainability, I'm talking about an aspect where the project can withstand pressure or the test of changes in terms of the climate. Okay. okay. So I'm going to show you certain innovation. Mm. For instance, in terms of heat, mm -hmm. okay, mm. you could realize that You could realize that this time around the, the temperature keeps on increasing yeah. and it's going to increase every year. Mm -hmm. We are not going back to an era where you could say that the temperature this year is less than that of next year. Oh. No, it's going to increase. Mm -hmm. That is why in the beginning I said we are in anthropogenic anthropocene era. Okay. The anthropocene era is because of our activities. Mm -hmm. So if you look at here, you could see that the ground is different mm. okay how different we have organic a lot of organic matter in here okay why because this will nourish the plants mm. and let me tell you before we brought this we need to treat the soil by burning okay we have several ways of treating the soil mm. but our approach is different okay mm. we bent it to extend that all the microscopic organisms mm. Although certain organisms are beneficial, but we are concentrating on those that are harmful yeah. to the, uh, the snails. Okay. So we treated it. Then we covered it with organic matter. Okay. Then you could see cassava here. Mm. The cassava have so many you know, um, benef benefits. Okay. It serves as a shade. And then the snails can also go under the roots, lay their eggs, mm. and feel comfortable. And at the same time, feed. On the 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 the, 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 the I, I don't know a, tuba right? Yeah, oh yeah. Yes, tuba. you can also see dwarf plantain. Mm. The dwarf plantain also serve as the same purpose, and the the good news is that the height is so short. Mm. That's why the name is dwarf, dwarf plantain. Okay. Okay. Mm. So this one it reduces the temperature in the greenhouse, mm. and at the same time it re great the the air that is in the greenhouse okay, okay you understand okay. i was about asking you because you were talking about the heat increasing every year yes so so it regulates mm. it regulates the air that is inside okay so in terms of the heat waves coming in it will bounce back, bounce back. and even if it comes in it doesn't have much impact okay on that of the snails mm. quite apart from that we also have sweet potatoes that have been planted and uh, very soon it will shoot up okay yeah okay mm. then we mm. also have the the hideout okay this, this is where the snails like to hide yes mm. they would like to hide and yeah, hide. as we saw in the the uh, previous the, one the previous one yes mm. this looks very clean i'm just you could also see mm, this the coconut coconut yeah the coconut hacks will rot and be more nutritious to the uh, soil. Oh, okay. Okay. 
while doing so it is also you know has some uh nutrients that they need mm. yes okay 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 and this place what's the size what's the size of this place so the size is um nine by 15 meters nine by 15 meters yes this is mm. nine by 15 meters mm. yes did uh are you does it mean it's going to contain a lot of uh, snails that's why you've given given it space or you just want the snails to have enough space to uh move about okay one is going to house in more snails okay they can take between five thousand to eight thousand snails oh, okay. but you decide the quantity because they produce fast mm. so you can start with two thousand can start with five thousand as i said 5,000 to 8,000 mm. should be the maximum. Yeah. Yes. Mm. And then we have our temperature. Good. Uh, so this is 3-in-1 um, sensor. Sensor, okay. It's able to read the relative uh, humidity in the greenhouse. Okay. Okay. Mm. That is how moist or how dry the greenhouse is. Mm. It's able to tell you the temperature. Let me check the temperature in the greenhouse now. You can see that it is 27 point um six degrees mm -hmm. celsius yeah. and it should also tell you the temperature outside the mm -hmm. temperature outside the greenhouse is 27.7 .7 and mm -hmm. in is 27.4 yeah yeah mm -hmm. okay and while the relative humidity is 99 mm -hmm. percent because so. we just you know we get to the place oh, okay so uh which one is the best i know we asked you in the previous uh video but for the sake of our new audience which uh humidity level is the best for the snails well it depends on the time of the day okay that is why the advantage we have here is that you are able to regulate the temperature the temperature snails don't like heat mm -hmm. and they don't like excessive coldness too because when they happen, it will, they will have been it. They will have been it by covering their face with a slime. You understand? Mm. So this temperature, 99 degrees, uh, uh, sorry, 99 percent, is mm. very optimum for snails. Should they be snails in here? Mm. Okay. But in a situation where the temperature is above 40 degrees Celsius, it is too much. Mm. So therefore, you need to cool the temperature by irrigating the place. So when you irrigate the place, the humidity will be high. Okay. But if the place is hot or dry, then the humidity will come oh, down. Okay. So it's, it's yes, inversely, you know, uh, okay. yes. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in the hibernation, when they do that and cover their faces with a slime, mm -hmm. what is the effect of that? The effect is that they cease from, you know, activities. Okay. It's more like somebody who is struck down by stroke. Oh, and okay. cannot go anywhere okay, okay. or somebody who is struck down by malaria and cannot mm. do anything so when it happens like that they can be there for about a maximum of six months they don't eat they don't move they don't do anything then they can die or they, they, anyway they hardly die they hardly die they okay. will die when they realize that they can't cope anymore okay yes okay now let's let's talk about uh how much this person spent i don't know if you would want to talk about that but before then this person is in the uh, your client sorry your client is in the uk yes how does she monitor everything going on here okay thank you very much that reminds me of another system we have mm. we have a system where you can control entirely everything here mm. with just a smartphone yeah, yeah. but this one is semi-automated okay it's semi-automated because she is having somebody who is taking care of it and taking pictures and videos to her. Oh, okay. But quite apart from that, if somebody wants a situation, maybe you are outside the country or you are within Ghana, but you can't go to your project site. Mm. We can do some for you where you can monitor everything with your smartphone. We just, you know, give you an app in, that you can, you know, install. And then you have access to whatever is going in here to a CCTV camera. And then also in terms of the irrigation, you also do the same thing. You can just press a button and then you'll be able to irrigate the entire place. Anytime, anywhere. Wow. Yes. 
this is good news for some people oh, there's one thing that i forgot to add up so the soil treatment soil management and everything is one of the significant aspects of this project so you can see that we have various instruments that we use for testing the soil you know monitoring the soil and everything but one of them is this instrument so with this you'll be able to know the ph of the soil that is the power of hydrogen and that of the temperature and even the sunlight that penetrates into the soil so um, you can see this this is the ph of eight points ph of um 6.8 making the soil very rich okay you can see the sunlight uh, sign over the written no okay so yes so the sunlight is not too much in here let's also look at the um temperature you can see that the temperature is um 29 degrees celsius and you can see it is normal it's on the normal good so we monitor all these things as part of the project implementation so does this come with the package <laughs> oh yes it comes with the package i mean the instrument no the instrument we don't give it to you it's a, it's a working tool you know yes but one of the advantages that efccs we give has to do with the fact that when we do a project for you you have a lifetime consultancy anytime you want us to come yes we just come and then have a look in terms of any challenge we provide a solution for you so you could see that the structure is not you know standing firm on the block but rather the block is at the back and within the block and that of the net we have a rubber black rubber okay an opaque material and then it is being braced with a button covered with rubber the reason being that no crawling insects will be able to come in here yes and then at the same time the block is also protected because the snails they like calcium so they mistake the block for calcium and when they do that they die because the digestive system is not able to digest the cement content of it so the gravels the main purpose is also to prevent weeds from growing so we laid black rubber on the ground before you know covering it with the chippings yes because many a times when there's weeds around it it serves as a habitat for other you know pecs and inside insects and that of snakes and the, the rest and they end up finding themselves in the, the the greenhouse okay so as i said we leverage on the power of gravity because here we don't have electricity here and so therefore we are not using water pump so with this type of sprinkler the the pressure will be more because it solely lies on the power of gravity and you'll be surprised how effective it is this is um it's it's sprinkled within a radius of eight meters so therefore two is very uh okay because if you want to use the rate to be too much and everything needs to be well calculated so let me on it and you see how it works so it rotates 360 degrees Celsius radius. So you can see that it's, you know, eight meters. To so extend that it even goes outside. Everywhere. So every corner will get water. So uh, when you see lizard moving around your structure or your greenhouse, lizards basically don't like the smell of garlic. And not lizard alone there are other things too that they don't like the smell of garlic even the snails themselves so what you do is that you blend garlic you can take two or one i mean the the, the full one you blend it then you put it in the knapsack machine top it up with water then you spray it around the greenhouse it shouldn't come inside because the snails themselves hate the smell of garlic once you do that you see that you not see lizard anymore yes 
So it's something that we tell our clients to be doing. But as you've asked me, I think it's important that everybody benefit of it. The power of every investment lies on the power of money. But one thing that EFCCSD we cherish so much is that we look at the clients, how the economy is, so our charges are affordable so that they can also be able to bring out their dreams. So this structure of uh, 9 by 50 meters, it goes in for 55,000 Ghana cities. And it comes with so many packages. So in a situation where you want to remove some package from it, the price will automatically reduce. And these are the packages. One, it comes with the entire construction, then irrigation system, a complete irrigation system with 2,000 liters of, you know, water polytank, the polytank with 2,000 liters capacity. Then, um, 1,000 pieces of snails. That is a point of lay. And then again, it also comes with training. We have to train you a maximum of two or three people. You train them to manage it. And then also a lifetime consultancy because there may be a situation where you want us to do something, like lifetime consultancy. Then um, five bags of snow feed. And then, of course, markets. The most important aspect, market. Where you can, you can export or sell your product um, locally. Let me give you these statistics. And everyone can Google it. Ghana consumes 15,000 tons of snow every year. But do you know the sad news? The sad news is that only 2,000 tons are produced locally. The remaining 13,000 tons are exported. Nigeria, Cote d'Ivoire, and the neighboring countries. And in terms of the market, the fact is, even if within, we've not quenched the demand, you can imagine how the, uh, the market, creative the market is. And there's also an opportunity for export. U.S., for instance, U.S. exports $4 million worth of snails each year. And have you heard of Ebunebunu soup in Ghana here? Ebunebunu is a local language which means green green, a soup that is green green. One snail goes in for 200 Ghana cities. And even sometimes they have to even import the snails from other, you know, neighboring countries. If you go to hotels, big, big hotels, I don't want to mention any hotel name, but the market is so, you know, lucrative. I would like to take the opportunity to encourage each and every one. Maybe you may be in a dilemma, thinking whether you should invest in greenhouse for snow, vegetable farming, tilapia, or wherever. But let me give you this small fact. Snow project is a project that once you have it, the production will continue. Snows lay, this one is uh, Achatina Achatina. It lays between 187 to 500. If one snow can lay averagely 200 X and hatch averagely 100 X, do that calculation. You are having 10,000 snails or you are having 1,000 snails. And go to the market yourself. Go and ask from the local market, go and ask the price of one giant African snail. Do the analysis yourself. You come and thank me and you call me to come and build this innovative greenhouse for you. Thank you very much. Right. Well, we, we want to call you, so just share your number with us at once. Well, my number is 0241 30 44 60. And our organization is African Foundation for Climate Change and Sustainable Development. So as you can imagine, yes.